we're just going to go ahead and start right at the beginning here. So we're logging into TrueNAS Core 12. And as you can see, if you're running 11.3, you know, a lot of the similar UI is here. There's been little visual improvements throughout. But what we really want to focus today on is some of the new features that 12 is bringing to the table and just kind of giving a live uh, walkthrough of that. We're just messing around right now. I mean, we don't even have a pool created yet. So there's look at that. There's right all, from the all beginning. sorts of upside. We're, yeah. we're, we're bare naked. Let's go. So we're going to get started here. One of the first new features we wanted to demo and pardon me while I name our pool tank, you know, the classic uh, Z pool name here. Um, one of the features we want to talk about and demonstrate first is fusion pools. So this is a new feature coming in 12. And to give you a little background before I finish setting it up here, the idea is, is you typically have your, your pools, you'll have spinning disk, you might have all SSD pools and you, know, you mix and match. Starting with 12, you have the ability now to create kind of a, a fusion or hybrid pool, if you will, of spinning disks for data blocks. And then if you wanna put uh, metadata on flash devices specifically to speed up all the metadata operations, you can now do that in 12. So I'm gonna demonstrate real quick how simple that is. Just for the sake of uh, brevity here, we're not gonna go and set up all the disks. We're gonna go ahead and just put a mirrored pair in here. And then we're gonna add a new special metadata allocation. Oh, there we go. Class, it's right there. Yeah, and we've talked about this before. The nice thing about having the metadata on Flash is that most of the requests that a system like this will see are for metadata, mm -hmm. not necessarily the file itself. Yeah. A lot of metadata operations. So the more you can do to put that on your faster media, the better. And, uh, you know, still get the economy of having spinning media in the same pool. Anyway, so that was pretty much it. All we had to do to go ahead and create a fusion pool. It was honestly an extra two or three clicks just to create an extra device, put a couple you know, flash devices in there and go. Uh, at that point, we're all set up and now all of our metadata is on flash just to show you what that looks like here. Right, and just from a functional standpoint, all we did was was pull two of the hard drives. Kevin slammed a couple uh, SAS SSDs, I mm -hmm. think, in there. But this will work SAS systems that support NVMe. Yeah. What else? Any kind of flash device that the system will recognize. So NVMe, SAS, okay. uh, we have NVDIMs in our M series products. So right. potentially other devices could be okay. used as well. Cool. Um, so as you can see here, we just created a simple mirror of two spinning disks. And then now we have this special allocation class type, which is comprised of the two SSDs that we fed it. Um, so what the special allocation class does, in addition to metadata, it can also store dedupe tables and small block IO. So if you have a lot of small IO, you could potentially have that funneled to the faster SSD okay. storage as well. Great. So let's uh, go back to pools here. Okay, for our next feature, we want to walk through real quick, and this is one I've been wanting for years that we finally have coming out in 12, is the ability to have native encryption. And by native, what I mean is not at the disk level, not necessarily said, but actual true ZFS aware native encryption at the data set level. And we'll get into why that's important here in a moment, but let's go ahead and start by creating a data set. And we'll just call it a, help if I can see the screen, crypto. While you're thinking about that, you know, security is obviously an increasingly important concern. Is it, are you seeing awareness of, of these issues all the way down to SMBs, or is it really the service providers that are facilitating this? What uh, Everyone is on board. It seems like we're getting, even from home users, security is really a big concern. And one of the features that having native encryption is going to allow you to do, one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to it is replication encryption. So right now when you replicate, it can be over SSH, that's encrypted over the wire, fantastic. But what about on the remote side? Well, your data is still stored in an unencrypted format, right. so you have to trust the remote host. Using native encryption, that's no longer uh, something you have to worry about. It's possible to replicate your encrypted data sets or ZVols or whatever to a remote system that you don't necessarily have control over and don't necessarily have to implicitly trust. You do not have to send the keys over with the replication, which means you can store your data there. It's fully encrypted. You can replicate it back and then at that point bring the keys and unlock it. Or okay. in this case, I'm going to use a passphrase. But that's a, that's a big deal for a lot of us because a lot of times we don't control the backup target directly. So we've just made a data set called crypto. We've added a passphrase to it. And you'll note, uh, yeah, don't change my password. I know it's not a fancy <laughs> password. Um, you're going to see some new icons here. This is a little different from 11.3, for example. So you'll see the root uh, pool data set here is, uh, doesn't have a lock button. It's X'd out or crossed out there, but the crypto file system is encrypted and you can see it's unlocked now. That means it's mounted, it's available, it's active. So I'm able to, via the UI now, do things like going in and locking it. So let's go ahead and confirm that we wanna lock that data set. 
and it's now locked. It's basically unavailable and won't be available again until we provide the passphrase to bring it back. So there's a, a question actually on encryption sure. uh, around overhead. So a lot of times when we think about any ad advanced data features, compression, dedupe, all sorts mm -hmm. of things like, along those lines, and then uh, encryption as well, yeah. are, are we taking much of a hit in terms of system performance well, here? Well, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a performance hit. There always is when you go and add another step in the right. pipeline, if you will. Um, the nice thing about the native encryption is for those who have used previous uh, disk-based encryption like Jelly, our software encryption, you were paying that penalty per drive. So as you added more drives, the penalty got steeper because you were having to encrypt on each device independently. What's nicer about this is you're paying the penalty once. Mm -hmm. And then irregardless of how many drives you have, those encrypted bits will be funneled out to the necessary VDEVs in the end. So it should be a lot more performant, especially as you scale up. Okay. Okay, so with that, I've been able to add an encrypted data set, you know, lock it, unlock it, et cetera. All the options are there. There's cool features for doing nested, so you can have an encrypted data set and then nest unencrypted on top of that or nest other encrypted data sets with different credentials, different passwords. So you can get as crazy as you want and uh, it should uh, take it with no sweat. Another feature, which was one that's been requested for many, many years now, let me set the table a little bit here. So a lot of folks who deploy FreeNAS or now TrueNAS Core uh, often want to be able to get to their files or get to their SMB shares or their services while away from the home. And not everyone we find has the VPN infrastructure set up on their networking gear to do that. So a request we've had for years has been adding some sort of VPN support natively to the product. So I'm pleased to announce that with 12, we've done that. OpenVPN has now been added in uh, two flavors, so we can actually run it in client or server mode, which is okay. really cool. So if you have an existing OPN, OpenVPN infrastructure, you can plug into it as a client, great. If you don't, you want to actually host the OpenVPN uh, network on your TrueNAS, you can do that hmm. as well. So uh, I don't know how your network's set up here, and I'm not going to go set it all up, but just to show you. Don't worry, yeah. Kevin's in charge of the network, right. which okay. means it's set up <laughs> haphazardly and most likely built for disaster. Well, I will try not to break you guys, but no, I'm, I'm not going to go set it all up. Just to, just to demonstrate the options are here. You can go ahead and, cr and set them up the way you want and then enable them just like you would any other service like SMB or NFS. It's just an option you turn on and then when the system reboots, it comes back and reconnects or restarts the server depending on how, how your setup was done. Yeah, that's, that's pretty unique. Do you have any sense? Well, talk a little bit about how you got there on, mm -hmm. on OpenVPN and what some of the other use case drivers? I mean, obviously you talked about simplicity of network setup, but you know, it's you know, it's for simplicity of network setup. We have folks who, again, they're, they're remote. Maybe they want to watch their Plex or access their media or whatever locally over SMB, but they're away from the house. That's fine. People travel. Some people are using it to share with family members and friends who aren't necessarily at the home, mm -hmm. and they don't have a other VPN technology set up. Enterprises typically have their own VPN set sure. up, which is great. You know, we encourage you to use that whenever you can. But for those who don't or can't use it, or heck, we've seen some weird situations where people take systems mobile, hmm. like actually out with a generator and are doing stuff like video recording. Yeah, well, out, we, we see out that Out in too. the wild, yeah, so yeah. to speak, where they can't bring all the extra network gear. So having something like this where you can open VPN in and then the person at the office can pull down files from the share, that's right. an option as well. Okay, cool. So... Anyway, that's that's an exciting one. Glad to see that finally land because that's been something many people have requested over the years. So you've got a lot of things you're excited about. I in am. This I mean, there's this is a good release. We've been working on this for <laughs> a year and a half now. I mean, we've been working on a lot of stuff in parallel. Even before eleven three was out, we were still working on twelve features. So right. it's been a long time coming. Um, next feature is for those who don't know, since we've switched to the new UI and starting in eleven three, everything I mean, everything that you can do in the UI is fully API driven. So anything you can see here or you can do here, you could easily talk to a REST API or WebSockets API, um, uh, connection to be able to access our APIs and drive the TrueNAS rig around. So uh, for those who don't know, let's see, we have API keys in here now. That is what we a feature we've added to 12. So no longer having to share your root password to the box, which is kind of handy. Mm -hmm. Not everyone felt good doing that. But we can go in here and create one time or you know, a key you can continuously use, but only display it the first time. But at this point, you can now drive the API fully around using an API key. Once they're created, they get listed in here. You can name them, give them a nickname, and then revoke them later. For the variety of use cases yeah. where you might 
drive those. Exactly. And we're seeing more and more people do that too. I've seen a bunch of Python scripts pop up on GitHub, for example, where people have things to go set up a bunch of shares or set up a bunch of users or just automate the, the true NAS experience. So this is something we wanted to give to that crowd to make it a little bit more convenient and how you would typically drive an API around. So when you think about the API functionality, do you see that more as an initial setup and configuration issue? Do you see some use cases where it could be an ongoing maintenance thing? Like what? It can be it can be a variety. Some folks use it in initial setup, but there's some folks who are doing a lot of tasks, you know, rolling new shares pretty frequently or adding users. So they may tie it into their existing infrastructure. So if you already have a tool that adds users for your business, for example, you can now tie a script in, which then goes and provisions their share at the same time or mm -hmm. sets something up special on the storage form. Okay. So definitely handy to have available. So moving on, uh, this one I'm not going to show, but just mention we did add another feature for 12 for uh, enterprise specifically, KMIP support. So for those who don't know, that's key management. So 12 enterprise will have the ability to talk to uh, KMIP servers and be able to record and request access to things like said drive keys, data set encryption keys, uh, things of that nature. Okay, uh, last feature I think I'll show off here will be this little fancy icon that showed up here. So this is something I don't think we've really announced or talked much about yet. Ooh, top secret, I like True it. Command Cloud is coming. So for those who don't know, we have our True Command, Command companion product. Say that three times mm. fast. Um, True Command is basically a single pane of glass uh, experience for TrueNAS. So if you're deploying or running multiple TrueNAS units in the field, True Command is your one tool which can talk to all of them, monitor all of them, help you manage all of them. It also supports things like RBAC. So you can have multiple administrators have access to True Command and you're not handing out just credentials to all your storage to just right. everyone on the team. You can restrict things or set up controls the way you want your team to administrate the boxes. So uh, starting with 12, we're gonna be debuting True Command, True Command Cloud, which is IX hosted. It'll be a service you can sign up for and uh, built right into the GUI, you'll have an, a, a way to go ahead and connect to it. Basically, after you've made a cloud instance, there's mm -hmm. just an API key you paste here, and then you connect. Will that be available before 12 as for yes. the beta users to yeah. be able to? We want to also debut it and have it in beta as well right. at the same time. So beta users so can it'll start signing it up. A similar schedule. Most likely. We, okay. may, we may release the cloud officially a little before 12 officially launches sure. if it's stable and ready and all that. But we at least want people to start kicking the tires, testing it out, getting us feedback as we go through the beta process. And is 12 required for that or will that be backward to? For the moment, it's only in 12. Okay. We've talked about maybe backporting it to 11.3, but we want to get through the beta cycle at 12 sure. first.